Hi good people, welcome back to this channel where we get to learn so many things about parenting, culture and lifestyle. So basically today we're going to talk about uh, bringing up kids in a foreign country. But before that, I'm going to, I want my friend to introduce himself. He's not my friend, he's my <laughs> brother. Let him introduce himself. I'm confused because of Swahili. Can yeah. you introduce yourself? I'm Ernest. Uh -huh. People call me BM. Uh -huh. Or I call myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know between the two. Yes, but I'm Ernest. I'm original from Tanzania, and I live in the US at the moment. Okay. Yeah, so, a YouTuber or whatever, and all other. Yeah, EBM is in Kenya currently. He's uh, helping people to apply for the DV Rotary. Please kindly go and check him out. Don't miss that chance of trying exactly. to go to the US. If you truly like going to the US and have a dream that you truly feel that you want to bring your kids or your children in a good, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, like a good environment and your kid to be exposed in this yeah. life. Don't retain your kids in Nairobi or back in the village because you need your kids to have the Kenyan roots. Huh? Henry, I want us to talk about bringing up your kids in a foreign country. How is it? Okay, so there are two things. Uh, number one, many people believe that uh, if you bring up a child in African way, there is African way. Mm -hmm. But that African way is no longer available in a normal way. Because the way we were raised, the material conditions are vastly different from current situation. So even if you say I'm raising my child in Tanzania or in Kenya, still will not be having the same lifestyle and child you bringing like yourself or myself because back you were growing up there was no cell phone there are no this there is no this there is no this so your experience is different so the current situation you are seeing the experience of how you raise up the child is more or less the same there are certain things that are different but that's how the modern way how to raise a child so that's the big number one uh so there are those like we say I'm raising a child in African way, but technically that is, you copy and paste from the capitalist world of the modernity. That's number one. But number two, uh, there are things obviously they are quite different, like how you talk to a child, how you uh, discipline your child, how you do this work, and that can change partly because of the law of the country and part of the advancement of knowledge about parenting and the, some of the tools given to some people because yes we turn up right because our parents did their great job but if you look now there are things at that particular time they were very very good but now they are not good so you cannot continue because i was raised that way so as as new parents we have to learn so there are tools of learning to become a good parent yeah. uh, i would like us to go in favor of our a kid let's say a kid in kenya somewhere not in the city because city kids are more advanced than the yes rural kids are so i would like you to do uh to talk in favor of that kid who comes from let's say uh, Meru, Trukana, Embu, or whatever part of the country that is how is that kid supposed to be helped to fit in the let's say in the american culture in terms of fitting in fitting in in the uh what do you say like you see now the exposure here in kenya is different to the exposure there first yes. in terms of speaking yes. the culture shock how do you help that kid to fit in the society yes and we are talking all the time like oh you have a play with your family a play for our family with your green card and then you win you have your children mm -hmm. when you take them there uh number one thing which is the cultural difference but is the confidence of kids mm -hmm. here we don't have that confidence nowadays it's a little bit but we don't have that confidence because when you see your parent you are looking i'm, I'm in trouble mm -hmm. so that is number one number two any any moment you can get severe punishment like you're a thief mm -hmm. like that is another another point about like raising the kids here so there is sometimes the relationship between parents and the children is becoming some sort of hostile is not i don't say my kids are not my friends I, I there are some parents there okay oh my kid is my best friend i'm not your best friend i'm your parent but i'm cool i agree I, I that way because there are certain things I, i'm i have a responsibility as a parent 
but sometimes here we take that responsibility to the extent that you become like a, like a drill sergeant or you become like a, a warden at the prison and like you are in charge like when you come at home everybody has to be scared of you that's not parenting that is just military lifestyle so that kind of lifestyle when you come there you find these kids or oh, ourselves we don't have that type of confidence so that is like even like so especially like the kids can it be easy for them to adjust but for for us we go as adults because our entire life has been brought up in that way that's why you can find like if you see uh let's say even a minister like or someone is the secretary of the big department of the government when he's talking to another person like even the president he's talking to say, this person is scared like i'm so sorry blah, blah 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 all the time it's just people because it's from the root of how you were brought to talk with the elder, how to be brought about this. So, and that is just like, it's not like this will respect you. No, it's just like they behave that way so that they can, if you cannot fire them, like there is a certain type of fear and which is not conducive, I mean, it's not good. But if you come there or you go to most of the other countries, people respect you, but the way they talk, they don't fear you. So that is the biggest thing, like if I can say like the difficulties, but the, nowadays the kids in town they try to have that confidence because when the school they go this English and medium school this international school people are paying a lot of money but they are trying to teach them to give that confidence but still when you come there it's different because the teacher himself or herself who is teaching you doesn't have that confidence so how, what experience are you going to give that child that have that confidence to express yourself to argue points by point that kind of things like so those are some of the big challenges we have as a just like a, a crisis of parenting good so in terms of uh, that parent who has come with a kid i've come with my daughter or my son to the u.s and has that issue of connecting with other kids because of maybe color the way they speak how do you help such a kid for me number one I'm not worried about the kid. The kid will adapt very, very quickly. Within a month or two, adults. adults will be difficult to. I've been 16 years and speaking like African. <laughs> but the kids for them, first of all, the kids they will be able to play regardless of the language. That's the good, the good thing about the kids. They don't worry too much about the color. They don't, they don't, they have no clue most of the kids. As is a that, that's you feel, oh, if I talk this way, how would they perceive? And within a month to a year, the accent will change, especially if you go with the kids less than up to 13, 14 years old. For them, it will be easier to adjust for them. At the beginning, yes, there will be those challenges. Like if you, you talk, the kids, they might, they might laugh because they do not know what, what you're talking about. They cannot understand sometimes, oh, you're coming from British English. They cannot understand. But at the school, they have resources. They have uh, just after school program teachers, they have uh, like any, any adjustment, they have those kind of things and they have all those kind of issues. The good thing, don't don't just stay, just ask for the, those kind of what uh, support you need. So for me, I'm not worrying about the kids in adjusting for the school wise. And the uh, kind of like the picking up, like, like kids kid to pick up to you, like to, those are more into going to high school kind of because those were like the mini adult people yeah. compared to these kids like their primary school like fourth grade three third grade, they don't have they don't worry anything about those but if you start going seventh grade eighth grade middle school high school yes they'll be having those kind of issues like they know more about it, the world is going on and other things and yeah so for just for you to be a little bit different a little bit okay about that parent who was a uh, able kid this is different different able kids or what do you say you have mm -hmm. that uh kid who truly needs like extra support attention extra yeah, yeah. health wise or let's say yeah. medical wise how are you going to obtain it? do they allow like i've had rumors okay i had people saying that if you go with a kid or maybe when you go to the u.s when you're pregnant they cannot attend to you because you're not an american no. is that true first of all mm -hmm. if you go to the hospital hospital their job is to treat you they don't care about your medical insurance whatever it is if, here in africa i don't know about in kenya but in terms of, if you get hurt you get injured whatever sometimes you go to the hospital they don't treat you then they have to get the police report first yeah. so some people die because they don't have the police form report or whatever but over there they will treat you first the police will be called whatever to the person will come there if there's anything else but 
that is the issue of billing. People who are doing the billing, but you're pregnant, they have to deliver the baby. So they don't care about whether you have insurance, whether you are immigrant, whether you're illegal, whether you are not illegal. They don't care about that. Yeah, so they don't look about that one. So medical-wise, I mean, but problem. obviously you, 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 you'll be... Uh, you have to owe the bill, you have to pay the bill back. So how you pay the bill, if you don't have the money, there are different ways. Like some people, they can, there is a forgiveness. But the good, good or bad of America, if you don't say, if you don't speak, opportunity goes away from you. So you have to advocate for yourself. You were mentioned about the people with the challenges or disability or medical conditions, like a child. If you don't go to advocate for your child, you don't say, they do not know. So you have to say, I can give an example. A couple of times I've been saying my son has been sick. My son has been sick. He has a very severe case of migraine. Yes, it looks like, oh, migraine is just simple, but for him it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But it's migraine in the brain, I mean in the head, mm -hmm. but also he has the same, more than the extreme severe pain in the stomach. So and this is, has been going like, so sometimes he can have a month without going to school. A month. So there are, whatever hospital they could eat with the school whatever so one time they had a plan he has to go to school just half day like he will be he cannot be able to he has to wear headphone in the class because it's noise because any noise is that way so if the teacher goes like if there is a assignment whatever he has to check that he has to be given a dark, uh, lower light room to do that so that's why that is part of the law mm -hmm. so this term uh the new term like like from August is now seventh grade. The school bus has a lot of kids. That the school bus doesn't have air condition. The school bus kids are noise. They make a lot of noise. So if it's there, the headache is going to be very very bad. So because of that, that if you don't say, so we had to report. So they brought another. There are even the mini bus, like the school bus, but they are mini. They are that long one. They have air condition. So that one he doesn't need to go to the bus stop. The bus comes to our door to pick him up to take him to school and from school to bring him home. Obviously, if he's not, he's supposed to go to the bus stop to go to school and come back. And if he doesn't go to school, he doesn't get punished. Oh, you need miss this number of days because they know the situation. So the only thing you have to do is just to make sure that, and the previous term, the situation was this one, and they authorized the one of teacher to come to teach at home five hours in a week. The teacher will be coming at your home to, and you don't pay, it's paid by the government. So my point is, if your child has any medical conditions, as a parent, don't feel embarrassed. You have to advocate for your those uh, for the rights and everything. They will be able to support you in any way you uh, you are looking for. Yeah. Wow, that's so massive. I didn't know that, and I know so many people didn't know that <laughs> because people here have a notion of. Americans, if you don't have this, you can't be treated, you can't be done this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But guys, remove that bad notion about American people. They are good people. Let's talk about diet. Yeah. We see so many American. I'm talking in the form of American because they're based there. Yeah. So many people say American people don't eat good food. Health-wise. Like, yeah. it's, it's all about uh, pizzas, Fried food, junk food. Yeah. food. They don't have like healthy, healthy foods. Even their meat and everything, it's not healthy. Yeah. So how do you survive? Because I've seen, I have friends who leave the country when they're skinny like me, when, but when they go there, they just start. Yeah, so there are various, there are reasons for that. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, yes, we have healthy food, mm -hmm. but it's very expensive. But it should be the other way. No. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, if this is Jewish, yeah. orange juice, Let's say, I don't know how many, this is one, this is one liter. Yeah. So two liters of, two bottles of this one, of orange juice, mm -hmm. is cheaper than one arch orange. That's the difference. Because it's processed? Yes. Mm -hmm. So as a poor person, which one, <laughs> which would be a better option for you? The juice. The juice? Okay. One mango, when it is cheap, like very, very cheap is one dollar. That is the time when it's very, very cheap. And that's not many, but usually it's about two dollars, one mango. One pineapple, you can get three to four dollars. One pineapple, mm -hmm. and it's not even taste good. So I'm giving an example like how expensive things can be. So someone, why should so you don't eat fruits like frequently like you in Africa? That's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, it comes to even like the fried food kind of that. 
yes, it is sometimes cheaper to eat like fried food, whatever, all those kind of things. Uh, sometimes it's expensive, like in, but it tastes good for people to eat. But here you can eat those food. But in, the good part about Africa is the lifestyle allows you to burn more calories. Mm -hmm. Here, even if you don't go to exercise to do any workout, you end up, if you put a tracker, like you put like a watch or you put it in your phone, a normal person has a three to four kilometers walking around. Mm -hmm. You go to the bus, you do this, you do this. Just a normal person have three, something up to five kilometers. But for me, in order to uh, to have five kilometers, that is a workout plan. Because you get from the house, you are in the car, if you go to work at a certain place, maybe you are in the office, you sit, you finish, you go pick up the medicine through drive through or give my medicine, you just go, or you order, they bring it to your home. You come at home, you sit there and watch TV. So even if you don't eat bad, even if you eat very right, but because your body doesn't have burning calories by being active, the lifestyle, that makes you gain weight. For instance, for me, I don't eat pizza. I've never eaten pizza. I haven't eaten Wait. soda. I don't eat pizza. I've Why? never eaten pizza. How? Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't done so many. I haven't drank soda mm -hmm. since 2016, 2017, I think. I don't drink soda. But I don't cook. Every food I cook, I don't use cooking oil. So I do all this, but I work from home. Mm -hmm. So meaning, in 24 hours, I might have how many steps? From my room to the office to eat and come. So no matter how healthy I eat, if I don't take the time to go outside to walk even like a kilometer, it means you eat 2,000 2, calories, which is health calories, whatever you want to call it, but you walk 10 steps in the house. So that's another challenge we are having. The lifestyle doesn't support people to burn calories, just the lifestyle itself. And when it comes to the winter, that's even impossible. So you have to find a way to start having a, at home to have your own equipment into other things, which is expensive. And it's just you are alone. You don't need, you don't have the company to do all those sort of things. So those are some of the things why people can gain weight over there. So it's just health food is more expensive, but lack of the mobility, the lifestyle doesn't allow for you to be more active like in Africa. Wow. Yeah. Social integrity. We have now, like I've I've seen most of your videos when you're you're telling us about life in the U.S., especially where you live. You've showed us videos uh, when you're walking or strolling around the the area, but we don't truly meet. We don't see people on the way. Yeah. Like that place is so empty. You yeah. have kids, <laughs> and here in Africa, we're used to like. When you have a kid, you will just find your kid in a certain neighborhood. They've yeah. gone to play there. But in your place, the way I saw, I just saw houses and cars outside in just wins. That's what I saw. I never yeah. saw people, kids, or dogs, anything. So, how is an African kid meant to survive that hardship there? First of all, is African, you think that there is no depression. So. People think that way. <laughs> Welcome to America. You will see what depression means. Number one, mm -hmm. uh, you have a neighbor, but you don't go to talk like you, my neighbor, whatever, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. You can see your neighbor maybe once in a month, maybe whatever's in the backyard is doing something kind of that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the interaction in a normal way. Even you, are, you have a child, for instance, our entire, like in the line of uh, over 20 homes, I know just like apart from my home with kids, there is two other homes or one home with little kids, like they go to school like that one. Mm -hmm. Like two, like there are two families or three families with kids, entire block. Mm -hmm. So majority of people, their kids, they are already in school. I mean, they are already in college or they are already have their own family. So it depends on the neighborhood, but the neighborhood I live is just kind of that. So it makes it difficult sometimes to interact. So that's why most of the time is indoor life. I usually tell people like the biggest thing challenge for immigrants when they go to I'm talking in this case in America is apart from anything we don't talk much is about moving from outdoor lifestyle, communal lifestyle to a highest level of individual private life of your own at your own home. 
So at the first year, six months to a year, you might go crazy. Because what are you going to do? Most of the time you want to home. You go somewhere, you have a schedule to go somewhere, you finish, you come home. That's how it is. And let's say that for me, I work from home, that even you will stay home more. So that is the beginning, it's just like, it's a crazy kind of life. But once you get used, it's the most comfortable life ever. For me, like, if I go back, let's say I'm traveling back to US, and someone says, oh, tell me, can we go to the store to buy? Is it, is it important? Can we just Amazon and come at home? Like, I don't want to be bothered to go, like, unless that is so important. Like, so you get used to that life, so you feel you are comfortable, which is bad, like, to go. So most of the time you can be at your own house, you are very comfortable that way. So, yes, it's a very big challenge to socialize. That's the big part. And even if, like, you, even if you meet people, what type of topics do you talk about? You talk about very few topics, about weather, you don't talk about religion, do the politics, even sports a little bit, whatever, because there are certain topics you cannot, people don't talk about in America. Because we have vast different views. So to avoid it, to ruin our relationship, we don't talk about it. So people meet you on the bus. Oh, today weather is good. No, they said it's not tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Maybe I'll, this year it's not going to start early. That's the conversation that's over. You cannot say, oh, Ruto, oh, this is taxes, this is killing wow. us. Odinga, oh, whatever. In Africa, you can do that and you, you are happy. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to know the name of someone, you can have this conversation, but not in America. So in the end, yeah, so it's depending. Like, so that's why you tell people like you, you still have to find to adopt way to adopt there because if you don't do that, you will end up most of the time being in the WhatsApp groups of Africans while you're in America. So instead of even developing in America, you are starting talking. You are in Africa in your mind, but just location you are in America. So you have to be there more than being there more to so that you can learn more, you can adapt more. And all this kind of thing. So it's a very big challenge about social interaction in the Western life. I don't say that you have to copy and paste their lifestyle, but it's just like the life doesn't give the environment. The environment doesn't give us the opportunity for for us to advance. Like, yeah, if you compare our life to their, that kind of life, for kids, it's still for them they they have to play at home. That's why you find like that's why if someone is buys the house, number one is the backyard where the kids will be if they want to play outside because front not so much people play yes nowadays but like just to have those like that's why someone i want to go to this system because it is easier or okay to raise the kid quicker because maybe we have the good neighbors or we have this kind of kids playing around but it still is very very difficult um last week we had an issue of how kenyans are trying to go to canada I, I hope you have that information yeah. on how Kenyans are trying to go to Canada to Canada through agents. Can you like advise people the right way on how to go to this yes. foreign country? Yeah. So for me, I don't care whether you go to Canada, whether you go to which country. Number one, uh, before you pay for any service, mm -hmm. have the conversation with the person who's helping, whether it's the individual, whether it's the company. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two. You need to have a clear timeline, realistic timeline. Mm -hmm. The problem is someone comes there. These are just, these are, they're very good people. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, you can, we can help you to get to this point, whatever. But they don't tell you exactly time. This process can take maybe one year or this is like seven months. So they just talk to you as if this process is just one month or two months to come you're already in Canada or in the US, which in reality they know it doesn't take that way. So, for, so when the time comes, oh, still I'm working on, I've already submitted. But tell the person from the beginning, okay, if you want to go to school through scholarships, the process takes maybe nine months or is one year. Tell someone in advance, they have to know the realistic. So if they're going to pay for the service, they have already the timeline and what to expect. And not to be surprised that, okay, within a month, I'll give you the visiting visa to the United States. But do you have a contract with the US? On no. speeding their interview and all that, so some, 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 something like that's the biggest thing I've seen. Mm -hmm. But number two is before you go, even if you come talk to me, do a little bit of your research before you go to someone. So that because you are coming for someone, you're going to pay maybe two hundred, three hundred, four thousand, whatever, a thousand, whatever. Do a little bit of the research. Meaning, if let's say I tell you, uh, if you come to America and from day one is visited to work. 
is the law allowing you to do that? No, it doesn't. So do a little bit of research so that if some says something, you are able to know if this person is real or not real. So you can go there to ask them a few questions so that you can compare. Because you are going to invest your money. There is nothing wrong to go to talk to two or three people first before you pay for any service. You just like find like your apartment. You are looking for the better one. Why I'm going to find someone who will be able to take me to the next level without comparing notes, without comparing to other people. So those are the things I can say people should be uh, looking at and those kind of things. Yeah. When it comes to agents, what do you talk about? What do you say about it? Because right now we have Kenyans who are suffering in Canada because so, they have so, both that agent. So the point, is, the point is not the, it's, mistake is for both ways. Mm -hmm. Number one is some people are so desperate even if they are not going to how I can tell you how many people will come here. I have money, my problem I want just to be there. That's but the problem is not money. The problem is do you qualify first of all? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Because I can take you to Canada or the US, then what? What, like I can tell you, okay, spend, the, give me seven thousand. I will take you for a visa to Canada. Then what? If visa, we're not going to survive. So you have to be before going to be desperate yourself. Use a common sense. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I want to go to the live there permanently. If you are going to give me this pathway, how does that going to me to the next level? That's the number one problem. So people cannot connect. So people are so focused. I want to reach that country. Yes, the agent can take you to that country, mm -hmm. but it's not responsible. But most of the agents, not all, mm -hmm. most of the agents, they do not know the life in those countries. Or sometimes they don't tell you because they've never been there. Mm -hmm. But they can do some documentation and everything. You arrive in there. Then what? They don't, or they can over, over direct, or they can give certain wrong information. I can give an example in Tanzania, for instance. One person came to me, wanted to go for community college. I said, but I said, now I'm sick. I was very, very sick. My son was, after two weeks, three weeks, we can have the meeting. Mm -hmm. So the, the parent of that child was, didn't want to, to wait. Went to another agent. The agent said, oh, don't worry. I'll go to the school, uh, community college, get the community college. Oh, this is very cheap, it was, which is not cheap to me. It was about eight thousand dollar per year tuition fees, but the university. So they showed like if you go to that agent, they they have San Francisco, like in California, you see LA, you see Lakers, you see all those kind of things. So this is where we we'll be going, we'll go to Hollywood, whatever, because the school is in San Francisco. The cost of living in San Francisco is very high. So if you put it was in Oakland, nearby San Francisco. So if you put the tuition fees and living expenses, it was over twenty seven thousand. To go for community college so they came to me like already they're having visa interview like we can say no, they're not going to give you the visa because why you are going say so the problem is you are going to community college which is in california which is so expensive because of living why can't you go to ohio missouri kansas iowa the midwest even texas the cost of living is low so if they tell you seven thousand the tuition living expense will be low so you cannot pay more than 15,000 in an entire year. Costner will say, oh, this is a reasonable amount, or 10,000 is a reasonable amount, but 27,000, and you're going to study sociology or economy, you can study at Kenyatta University. So those are the things. So the person has never, has never been to California or the US in general. So as a person, you cannot advise someone to go to California to pay for their own education. Mm -hmm. Advice if, like, so I'm giving you the point is sometimes because people say, oh, I want to go there, California, you see how beautiful it is? No. But for me, because I'm a parent and I know that life, I will never suggest someone to go for, is it financing their own, their own self to pay for their tuition and living expenses to go to California. I'm not suggesting you that way. I would suggest you go to the cheaper states. But once you are there, you finish that. If you want to go, you go to a job there, that's up to you. So the problem is it might be some, they don't have those correct information. Some, yes, they take you there, but they don't give you what will be the next phase. And the, the mistake for the people who are going to those agents, they don't want other things after that. They focus more about it. After arriving there, I want to go to America, and then I will fight. There is one kid came to me, I call kid because he's just having a bachelor degree, came to me and said, I want to go to visit in America. I've already the money, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
But when we have the meeting, we are talking about this consultation. We come to find out that person has a bachelor degree and has few points before below first class. Mm -hmm. I said, why do you want to go for a visit where you can apply for school, scholarship, you can get it? Mm -hmm. Oh no, for me, I just find a conference or find a, after everything, I'll just disappear. So you cannot disappear in America. America is not in forest. It's not in Congo or oh, Amazon <laughs> forest. You can go to disappear. Yeah. So I, for me, I said, I'm not going. I'm not going to help you because I know you are choosing the stupid industry. And yeah. ten years to come, you come to 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 say I gave the wrong advice. Yeah. So I refused to help a person because the path you are using is wrong, and you have the qualifications of succeeding if you come with you. Full for them, whatever. And then they say you have to do for me. I say go and do this and this and this. Check this video, watch it, do on yourself. You get full funded scholarship. Good. But someone is forcing you to give you the money. You take the money, but I guarantee you, the person who arrived in America, their life will be very difficult. Mm -hmm. They tell to it's you who took them there and you didn't take them to the next level. That's why all my services, any program I take you somewhere, someone, I, the first question is, what is your goal? You want to go to stay there permanently or you want to come back to your home country? If you want to be in permanently, based on the qualifications, so this is your plan, this is your roadmap. If you're going to do bachelor, after bachelor you have two years, two, one year to do OPT. You'll be doing, for instance, you'll be applying for green career lottery. At the same time, you do internship in these kind of areas. When you have one year, on that one year, you have to find what companies they hire you. Even if they pay low, but they guarantee to give you green career through sponsorship. While you are doing those kind of uh, waiting for those uh, jobs and other things, you apply for master. If you have master, you apply for doctorate. So I have a plan, and I tell you everything. The life, and once you arrive there, I have six months to mentor you, not for extra pay, so that you can settle that particular country, but only in the US. Because I know how adjustment in these countries are. And if you are there, not all immigrants will be able to know the information like me or person who is there, but not all immigrants have invested like, okay, this is how to do this paperwork, this is how to avoid. Some they know the only fake way. That's all they know. Or they are jealous because you come there, you already have masters, and someone that came there as a visitor with the form for, and now is staying there for eight years, hasn't have that bachelor degree, and you, you have all the potential. They'll give you bad advice. Some they'll give you good, good advice, but some they'll give you bad advice so that you can get bad things so that they can feel that they're superior than you. And especially tell you for green card lottery winners, those that should be very careful. Because you come in America from day one, you have green card. While someone there has struggled for nine years, doesn't have that green card. What advice would get? Some will give you the good advice. Oh, that's a card. That's important. Do one, two, three. But majority of us, we are jealous because we messed up our life. We want for you as a brand new immigrant to mess up yours. That's why I tell people, not every African, because you eat the same ugari, you eat the same fufu, whatever you call it, is not supposed to be a friend. As I said about that, I want to... to I want you to help these people who come to the U.S. Like now, a green card holder is coming to the U.S. And these people, they want to choose. They want to choose the state they are going to. Like, what would you advise a person who is applying for this green card as they choose where they want to go and stay? How could you advise them? The problem on when you are the winner of a green card, yeah. at the beginning, you didn't have much of the choice because some people, they are looking for host, someone to help them. So obviously by default you go to a place where your host is. So if it's in New York, you can end up in New York. That's the problem. But now you know you you look <laughs> for a host, you feel that I don't want to go. I want to look for a host who is in Kilelesha. I don't want to look for a host who is in Gidurai. Yes. Or so that's what you are telling people this way. Yeah. Even if you get the first host, don't stop there. Start looking for more mm -hmm. different states. Mm -hmm. That means if you get another one. You just find it a good option. There is one person got a host in North Dakota. That is not a bad, but it's extremely cold. Like you can die, especially for a black person, you can die. Someone have never been to a cold area. Yeah. So I connected it. So I hope there was I connected to an, a friend of mine in Tanzania, is in Arizona. So there are some sometimes like the other problem is some people win the big lottery. They want oh I'm quiet. I won. My host is in LA. Okay, go in LA. And you will see the life. But if you have another place, someone is in New Mexico, someone is in a small state like Iowa, just go there. 
There is no competition who is in a better America. You are in America, my friend. So it doesn't matter whether you are in Kansas, whether you are in New York, it's America. But you can stay in New York, you can stay in California. I'm not saying all New York. If you live, I'm talking about Manhattan itself. But if you live inside, like you live outside six hours, life is normal still. But majority of people, you get the host in these big cities and you end up working three jobs to survive, not even to save. But if you go to the normal states, it's easier to work in that way. So number one, I would advise people to not just to find one host and the rest, find two or three. If like, let's say you get me as a host, I'm giving them, I live in New York, and then you find you as a host, you live in Ohio, you come back to me, so oh, thank you so much, but I got another host in, top, in Ohio, I think that would be better for me to start a life. I really appreciate for accepting me and whatever. The person will be saying, oh, that's good. And they know that Ohio, to start the life is better than New York. So you see, but don't get the first host and then you stop there. And another way is you can find extra money and you find someone in the inner state. You can I'm giving example. Let's say you want to live in Washington, Seattle. Find Kenyans like you can. I want someone I can rent the apartment. You have your house. I want a room to rent for two months. How much will you charge me? So you can go specific to a state and ask someone to pay and stay there. But don't go all the time. I have to find a free hosting. Because sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Because you can go to a hosting, you can have the worst experience, and you, are, you can be crazy. But you can go to a place if you pay that way. The problem is there are no, many people don't talk about expectation as a host and you is coming. So why are you asking me as a host? For many of you have kids, some people they think, oh, I, I'm going to get a free child care will be taking off my child but i didn't talk to, i didn't talk to you about expect my expectation and for yourself i'll be saying that for free then i'll be going to work the person is not thinking for you to go to work first they think to help their children so there will be a crash so why do you say this is a bad host and they say this person is bad doesn't help the kids doesn't it see clean the house you see but if you talk before what are your expectations what do you want me am i going to stay for free and if i stay for free what do you expect from me Okay, someone said, I'll expect you some of the days to have to wash dishes. Some, but if you know, if someone does it, but you have to have that discussion. For me, any person I host, I'm the one bringing that topic because I don't want to have that problem later. Mm -hmm. So if you are, you are safe or free, I don't want to wash dishes, I'll tell you. Don't wash dishes, don't take care of my children. I tell you from the beginning, I'm not going to baby, baby my kids. Because just like for me, I'm not, going, I'm not saying this in a bad way. I'm not going to take a, child from, a person from a village to if they are living in the restaurant to bring it to, to be babysitter for my child. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you from Belgium from Tanzania today and to be helping my children. The kids are born and raised in American lifestyle. You you come here, you do not know, know, know that lifestyle, you cannot handle them. Yes, with the time, yes, there are certain things you can do, but certain things you can't. Even myself, myself, I'm the parent, I'm still figuring out the raising the kids in America. And you arrive today, I give you that, that, that responsibility. No, I'm not to give you that responsibility. Yes, if I, I say I host you, if I host you, I'm helping you to stay on your feet, not expecting to come to raise my children. No, I don't need any person to raise my children. I'm the parent. So, what about those parents who are coming to? What about those, those kids who are coming to the US? Parents who are coming with their kids to the US and you need to host me. If my kids, let's say three or four kids that I have. For me, like I have hosted one like, with a child, yeah. the husband, wife, and child. It was cool because the kids, they, I mean, that child, the one was age, age, age of care, mm -hmm. so they played together all the time. So that was good. So for me, like, so the point is, like, those, I mean, the kids are trying to be friends, they'll be whatever, mm -hmm. and up to now, like, they are considering themselves as best friends. Mm -hmm. So for the kids, for them to Whatever that would be okay. It would be easy for them to go along. It would not a burden, like taking care. No, your host is here has four kids. You have two kids or three kids. I have five kids. But the point that's why, like, if someone says in America, if someone says I will host you, that means they can handle. If you no, they, I'm not hosting you. But the point is that's a need of discussion. Yes, I'm coming. I'm thankful. What do you expect to be for two, for duration? Is one month, six month, one year? Is it free or you have to pay? You have to have this discussion because if you don't have that discussion, I guarantee you, you have a problem in the future.
The person later will be making the video. My host was making me to wash all the dishes or make to, to be a babysitter. They will stay up because but that, the problem was not the problem was expectation. Yeah. Well guys, I hope you had all that. If you have a kid and you feel that you want to take your kid to another country, guys, just had it. Just follow up on EBM Scholars channel and you will get to learn more about America. Meet be education wise, meet be job wise, meet be is this scholarship or something? scholarships? Yeah, or to if, finance your own studies. Yeah, TV, rotary, all those things. You're going to learn them and get to know them. Don't leave this country blind with going to the US. In the yeah. name of you're going to to be rich. You know, people think when you go to even the diaspora thing. I'm not rich to, yet. He's rich. Who? You. Me? No. Well, not but for me, no. For me, now. for me is this way. Someone they say, if you tell me to, for me. It was my dream to be in America. Some people they go there because they like stuff here. I have to go to America. For me, I made the decision to go to America as a as a kid. So I didn't I didn't know about how the difficult life is. Yeah. It was my dream. I have to go in America, and that's where I stay. So for me, it's different from other people. I don't care how hard the life is. I'm in America. <laughs> I'm dying there. I'm going to be buried there. My life is there forever. That's me. So if you tell me go to even Tanzania or Kenya. For, I mean, I can come to live for five years, whatever, two years, but that's my, my, my primary residence. I'm okay with that. But to say that I have to come, my life is difficult, I have to come to live in Africa. No, no matter how difficult it is, everywhere life is difficult. I'm okay with the difficulty for America. Can I, can I ask you a <laughs> yes. personal question? Yes. If you die, God forbid, you want to be buried there, you want to go back to your country? If, let's say right now, I'm in Tanzania or in Kenya, I die in Africa, I'll be buried in Africa. But I'm I'm dead in America. You bring the body in Africa. Why? Because Why do you want to spend twenty five thousand? No. Back home. What is home? Home is Tanzania where you came from. Home is where your heart is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about my kids? Their ancestors. I'm their ancestor. They, my grandchildren who are, who are American. But they need to. Why do you need to spend twenty five thousand, thirty thousand dollar to bring my body from America to Africa? Why? That 25,000 will go and help them a lot. And if you believe in God, the soul is already in heaven. And you can't take and the soul to Yes, and yeah, and again, if you put the body there, how many times they, those ancestors they are coming to, 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 to check on you? How many times they are going to check on you? If they are, okay, I'm going to bury Nikki Goma. How many times the other people will be coming to check on me? Maybe the witchcraft people they will come there and take this body and they say, Oh, we better the new juju with a visa with an EBM body, you know, with EBM bone or something like that. And like, they give you juju, you get the visa. <laughs> but in a serious note, it's this way. For me, I don't care to be transported to another place. If I die in Africa, bury me in Africa. I die in America, bury me in America. I don't agree to spend 20,000, 30,000 to. Yeah. Transport means, but I, I personally hated the people. They're in America and they plan to be buried in Africa. And when you die, you don't have any insurance to be buried here and you would bring the burden to other people. Oh, the person said to be buried home. Why didn't you buy the insurance to be transporting you there and you were making us to pay for you to be transported back to your body in Africa? You want to be buried in Africa? Start saving the money to be buried in Africa. If for me, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I, then you have to, don't take me to America. I, I'm dead. I die in America. Don't take my body. That's simple. But my, my other condition, don't ban me. And you feel pain. <laughs> I don't want to get the fire on earth and fire in heaven. Better to get. To... <laughs> I'm not going to set the fire here. No, that's my condition. Lady. Don't ban me. Don't ban me like you. I don't care. That is the only thing. <laughs> Please. <laughs> my to, only wish you don't want to be burnt in yeah, no, no, no. you don't want to be burnt physically and you don't want to, burn, to burn in hell yeah, both ways, I don't want that to happen <laughs> You're yeah, so just in general people are complicating life in general if you are dead already the, you are, you are, your soul is in heaven this is complication, oh, you must be born buried in motherland, what is motherland? God said go in heaven this is our land, entire earth is ours Go and multiply, conquer the earth. I didn't say go to Tanzania. Just colonial master put the map to say that is Tanzania. Before that, Maasai would be in Tanzania and Kenya, they were Maasai. But now there's a Maasai in Kenya and Tanzania. If you cross there, they catch you. Why? If colonial master didn't come, 
We didn't have this Tanganyika, Kenya, Uganda, Malawi. We didn't have this. But the conference did that one. So I don't care like here. Die, die here, bury me here. Die there, let me stay there in peace. <laughs> but it's, I understand like there are some people they come there for the purpose, like they, they're getting disappointed for the purpose of getting more money, whatever, making rich. For me, even if I'm not rich, my life, I'm happier in American lifestyle because I imagine that life, the challenges I imagine in them, I know, yes, they are there. And I know each country they are there. But if you come with that, you might have different, like you make the decision now, oh, because now I, I graduate with my degree, I don't have a job. So that difficulty you might make, oh, let me go to America, think that we're going to get rich. For me, even if I'm not rich, Tell me, go and become a uh, member of parliament in Tanzania or Kenya versus live your normal life, the same life in America. I'm choosing my normal life. I don't care to be a member of parliament with this stress. Be there, eat my burger, make my beautiful video, chill. So you eat burger, but you don't eat pizza. Yeah. yeah. And even that burger, it has to be conditioned. No those, gr no those grasses, <laughs> stupid things. <laughs> yeah, so I have my condition. Yeah. Only, yeah, visa no. Well, guys, that was an amazing talk. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys are also going to enjoy it. I hope you have learned something. And I hope you're learning still. Because it will be a continuous talk. Each and every time you come up to my YouTube channel. Yeah. The last thing I want to point to people, they know that. You come to America or even Western world, you don't have money to afford babysitter, house girl, maid, house boy. No, you come there, you're 100% responsible. Is a parent, so don't come there. So oh, I'll come we'll find someone to help me. No. At what so age are you supposed to leave your kid in the house alone? It depends on the state, but most of the states thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay, guys, you had it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. And bye bye. See you in the next. Bye bye.